gang, some of the good dog. I want to give you guys a little bit of a quick training tip here. So a lot of folks ask about the muzzles that we use. I, probably the most common question we get. So here's what we use. This one's a different color. Typically they're black. This is the Baskerville Ultra, right? You see how it's designed, lots of space for dogs to be able to, they can drink water through here, they can take food, they can pant. It's very comfortable for dogs if they have to wear it for prolonged periods of time. Now they don't offer the same level of safety as some like Jafcos that completely cover the dog's mouth, which you can cut holes in for food and things like that. But we prefer these for long-term use, um, walks and things like that, training, anytime dogs are using a lot. But then everybody asks about, what the hell is that on your guy's muzzles, right? Let's see if I can get some good light. What the hell is that, is that on your guy's muzzles? And these are, this one's a little ratty, could use a little bit of a tune-up, but this is a good idea of what is a close-up of what you guys are asking about. So this is a Baskerville in the typical black, and it's been wrapped with blanket yarn. And so what we do is we wrap all of the points of contact, right? That, and, and some dogs, it's, it's, I can't really, like just the tip top here, because I don't have an extra hand. Look at this piece, hang on a second. That's, my OCD is not going to stand for that, like little piece flying off. There we go, better. Uh, so those are the typical points of contact on the top, uh, the, the nose of the dog, the, the, the bridge of the nose. But some dogs will be more sensitive and also need it for the sides. So it's a super easy and inexpensive hack between the muzzle and the blanket yarn. I mean, you're under 30 bucks. And then it just takes some time like getting your, your, your yarning techniques together to where you can tie it off good and make sure that it's snug because you really want it to be snug on here. Now, we've removed the top strap on this one, but they come, like I was showing you on this one, they come with a top strap attached. So we've just opted to take the top strap off of this one. So if you've got a dog that's definitely going to be like fighting to get the muzzle off or is a great escape artist with the muzzle or anything like that, just does, can't stand having it on, then top strap is absolutely critical to make sure that that muzzle stays in place. This one just doesn't happen to have it. Most likely it's the one, one of these, one of these muzzles that we use for when we're doing training and things like that. And so we're not going to typically need as much security with the top strap. So Baskerville muzzle, ultra, you can order them anywhere. Word on the street, I've heard some people saying that there's like some, some copies out on Amazon that aren't the real deal. I don't know, we haven't seen them, we haven't come across them. You can probably also order from dog.com and a few other vendors, but they're inexpensive. The, the biggest challenge is making sure you find the right size for your dog. Um, so they go through, what, one through six, size one through six. And for really, really, really wide, wide face pitties, some of these can be challenging. For really flat face dogs, some of these can be challenging. They work for about 80 to 90% of dogs. If you have that 10 to 20% that doesn't, don't fit, there are other, other, other muzzles out there that you can use. Plus, you can also heat these up and then you can mold them a bit if you get really crafty and try and custom fit them more towards your own dog's face. If you have like a really wide faced dog, you could put, I think people have like heated these up, <clears throat> put like a softball in there and let it, let the, let the plastic kind of adhere to that size and stretch a bit like that. So that's another hack as well. So basically, if you're looking for a muzzle and, and let me add this one caveat. You can't just throw a muzzle on a dog and expect it to be comfortable. Even with the blanket yarn, you've got to go through muzzle conditioning in order for your dog to be comfortable with the muzzle on. So we've got videos with muzzle conditioning. Um, I'll see if I can link it up here. Um, Josh Moran has a great video. If you look up Josh Moran, muzzle conditioning. Um, so between his video, and there's several others out there, as well as ours, you should be able to get your dog sufficiently muzzle conditioned, but you can't jump that step. You can't skip that step and then expect a dog to be comfortable with something as foreign as this. So what you'll find is if you don't do the muzzle conditioning properly, the dog will fight it, will try and get it off, will 
pull and pull. They can like rip their dew claws out. They can scratch their face. It's just, it's just, it's a hellish thing and you don't want it. So do the work one week to two weeks of like really like doing the work with food and and doing the muzzle conditioning get your dog into a totally different space and if your dog is one that might redirect on walks might be dangerous when guests are over might might be a risk for any situation <clears throat> or just going into the vet i mean like every dog should be muzzle conditioned i've said it a million times there's so many different instances where it would be helpful so no matter what muzzle condition your dog first order of business and then if your dog is going to be wearing the muzzle a considerable amount of time, whether it's during the training or otherwise, then try a Baskerville Ultra. You gotta find the right size, That's work, that works on you. And then if your dog's gonna be wearing it a lot, check out the blanket yarn. You can pick whatever colors, you can mix and match even. You could do red, white, and blue. You could do all purple and bling it out. You could do also, you could make it a hot pink, right? So you could do whatever you want. but. This hack alone, sorry, this hack alone has helped us prevent abrasions and, and any kind of like fur being rubbed off, which is a very common issue with dogs that have to wear muzzles a lot. So it's been a huge, huge game changer for us as far as helping dogs be comfortable and retaining their fur and not getting abrasions. Hopefully this will help you. Like I said, you're gonna have to figure out the actual tying it off and how to work it out, but you guys are smart guys, you can sort it out. So that's it, I hope it helps. It's the question I probably get the most, what muzzle do you use and what the hell is on your muzzle? These are the muzzles we use, this is what the hell is on the muzzles, and these are why we use these muzzles in this fashion. And muzzle condition your dog, all right? Show them the good dog, I hope you guys are good. Love y'all, and uh, it's a beautiful day out here. Sorry if anybody's in cold weather. Talk soon, see ya, bye.